find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, it's the Rambling Movie Minute, our little water cooler on our corner of the internet. Uh, of course, with me as our is my usual compatriots. Uh, I'm Mike Sorg uh, at Sorgatron, but also Malengo at Rambling Mango. You can find him at theramblingmango.com for That's more me. fun stuff coming up. Eventually, maybe. Kind of yeah, no, of. no, Go eventually. Ahead. I I did do a comic strip, um, but I'm not advertising stuff yet. But oh. I did complete a comic strip for Avengers. But if you do want a little bit of a uh, a, uh, a sneak peek, that's where you're going to go for that. Also yes. with us, the man from the Bronx, Mad Mike, Mad Mike 4883, the birthday boy boy today. Birthday yeah, buddy. It's birthday boy podcast time. Birthday boy podcast day. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. Um, hey, Mike, is, it, is it really your birthday today? Yes, it is. That's crazy. It was my birthday yesterday. Oh, that's we're, awesome. We're doing the, the birthdays. We're birthdays. It was Mike's we're birthday, birthday last week. We it was. It. it was. It was so much that when I used to work with Malengo, they I think like four of us had a birthday, and then we just all go out for one lunch. Yeah. That's so how they covered that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyways, and there's a little peek at that uh, uh, comic there, so go check that out over at theramblingmango.com. We'll be talking more about that as we go here. But today, uh, as you maybe saw uh, real quick in that, if you're on our video version, um, is, is we're going to talk Captain America exclusively. This is going to be more uh, after big releases like this. I guess the, like, oh, the idea is we're going to have more of a spoiler zone only. This is the thing that everybody probably saw over the weekend. So let's just, you know, you know hash it out. It. Most of us have watched it. Most of the people Sork. hopefully listening have you watched are now- it entering another dimension a dimension of time and space where we see movies when they come out and we talk about them incessantly you are now entering the spoiler zone (laughs) malango i know you got a format to this you got an idea uh about how to roll this out so what are we what are we doing today so i sent you guys all a list of questions and after the show uh, in the future, we'll just post this format to anybody who's interested mm-hmm. in being in this round table of spoilness. But the idea is basically, like, we all have our own opinions. Sometimes they, they mesh, and I think that's a good dynamic. But it's always good to get people's, you know, opinions on, on big releases like this, especially since it ties so close to our genre and a lot of our interest and what we grew up with. So that we might just be run down TV the movie. Tonight. Um I guess I could be the uh the guy, whatever that's called. The moderator? Yeah. Yes, there we go. See? A team of awesomeness. When we Damn. combine uh yeah, I'll be the moderator. <laughs> we become the movie minute. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, first question right off the bat, guys. Uh we all saw this movie, right? Yeah. And I'll prefix the movie with I think, no, I'll, yeah, we'll start with the very, the second question, because I think that one's more important than the first one. Did you guys like the movie? Yeah. Yeah. Um, pretty much. Not disappointed. I, the movie has been out since Thursday night. I've seen it twice. So, <laughs> yeah, a little yeah. bit, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, straight hands down, I, I, I like the movie. I think I still put it a little bit below Avengers two, but it's up there. I, I liked it. I enjoyed it. Um, yeah. So, uh, did anybody see the trailers beforehand? Oh yeah. So uh, I, I gotta say, uh, and Mike, you'll you'll enjoy this. Uh, when Guardians of the Galaxy hit, uh, uh, people yelling Bootista at the screen. Uh, <laughs> so See, transcending wrestling, it was pretty fantastic. In our theater, we had whole rows singing "Uga Uga Uga Chaka Uga Uga Uga." Oh, dude, the song is in my head for like, like all night long. After that, yes, it doesn't, doesn't nice. even matter. Um, but uh, it's a great trailer. We've seen it before. It wasn't a new one for me, at least. Um, and yeah. I think, like, for being something that I think you know, the Avengers were already kind of an offset kind of 
you know, not everybody, they're not as iconic as a Spider-Man or a Superman, right? But this is something that's even more, what the heck are these characters? You yeah. Know, I barely know anybody that's read a Guardians book. I haven't read a Guardians book. I've seen one cartoon where they were featured with, with uh, Spider-Man, I think, was it? Um, it, it? And that's it. And, and I've seen this, and I, I'm completely down with the idea. Yeah, same here. I totally am down with it. I uh, I was reading an article earlier today that was talking about how um, everything's kind of intertwined and how this movie had so many, like, secret eggs in it to help connect the dots. Mm-hmm. They're just thinking they're like, man, this they're just going to keep getting my money because this is, a, this is a comic book visually, like, displayed on a huge-ass screen for me to basically just sit back and watch. Yeah, and, and, and it really does. I, I guess we'll get into this a little bit, but, I mean, the the, like you said, the intertwinedness, like, like catching up things, like, oh, crap, I just saw that guy on S.H.I.E.L.D. last week. Oh, they're, they're talking about that thing from that movie. Oh, they're brought up uh, Tony Stark from his movies, you know? I mean, it's... Yeah. it's oh, they brought in Gary Shandling from Iron Man 2. <laughs> exactly, right? And then, and then you know, tied that up. Um, it, it's it's this interconnectedness that I think if you're a big reader of Marvel comics, you're going you notice these kinds of things and you feel kind of um, 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 rewarded for being a guy that reads the most of the comic books. You know, um, now if you're a person like I was listening to a podcast earlier where like I didn't understand Avengers, I didn't understand what this blue thing meant, I didn't know what this was about, and and but I didn't watch the Thor movies. It's like, well, then you're not gonna get it. You know, yeah. uh, I, I think you know some people are a lot of people are plucking down their money. They see an action film and don't even care if they understand why that thing is a thing. But for the rest of us that did go to every single Marvel film. And can follow along. Oh, that's the thing from that. That's the thing from that. You know, I mean, it, it's not. These are not one-off movies. It's more like Avengers Universe movie one, Avengers Universe movie two. You know, and, and it, it it's a sequence as far as that goes. Um, I think now that there's so many, some people are getting a little lost and maybe kind of feel departed, which is kind of what the comics well, problem is. I think it's because they haven't tied it together yet. Mm-hmm. Like especially with some of the stuff in. Captain America, like some of it, you're waiting for it to pay off. Yeah, and you're gonna have to wait a year for Avengers two, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Iron Man three was kind of self-contained, Thor two was kind of self-contained, Captain America, absolutely not self-contained. Mm-hmm. Like, like Iron Man two was the one that introduced everything we need for Avengers. I think Cap 2 is what's really introducing us what we need for Avengers 2. Yeah, and we got little slivers of that with Thor. I mean, uh, Iron Man 3, I don't... It, it really just kind of wrapped up the Iron Man part of things. Um, so, uh, it's... But everything's setting up for S.H.I.E.L.D. And how much is going to play out on S.H.I.E.L.D.? We'll find out. I know, you, you know, tonight with the next episode. Uh, they it's, time... supposed, it's supposed to happen tonight, too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, the wrap-up of... Uh, see, you know what's interesting about that? Since that topic just came up, I will probably watch this last episode because of the way it ties back into the movie. Well, here's the problem, though. There's a lot of there's a lot of things happening. I don't know if you want really? to jump into the episode. Oh, all... no. You, you need to watch at least two or three episodes back, I think. Yeah, you got... yeah you... Two and three episodes back prefix yeah, ba- the movie. Basically, whatever they yeah. have available online, start from there. Yeah. Uh, basically, last week's episode and this week's episode look like they're just going to straddle what happens in Captain America. They really kind of do. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, Especially it, since one guy who the... was on last week's probably won't be on this week's based yeah, on what it, happened it, in Captain yeah, America. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, I guess we're, we are in spoiler zone, just a reminder. Yes. Um, but, yeah, one of the characters from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was... Jasper Sitwell. Was one of the, you know... Uh, big agents that were helping out with what the situation on there and he turned out being one of the hydra guys yes jasper sitwell who was in uh some of the one shots he was kind of taking the place of colson in some of the one shots um he was mm. in the one shot for the avengers movie item 47 i think uh he was in the one shot where colson was talking about how hulk how the hulk movie ties in and i actually really liked sitwell as a character and then went like when the senator from Iron Man 2 whispered Hail Hydra into his ear, 
my mind just went. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we were diverting. I, I'm sorry, Malenga. We're diverting from your um, your original yeah, trailers so, question. So good, so good talk. Oh yeah, the trailer question. Well, <laughs> the trailer question was really just: was there a trailer that really stuck out? The I guess that would be the one. I, there was a. I can't what, refresh Actually, my Actually, Amazing Spider-Man Two was a new trailer for me. Mm-hmm. And I, the first time I saw it, I saw it in 3D. And holy crap, I want to see Spider-Man 2 in 3D. Really? <laughs> <laughs> it looked amazing. It looked oh, really, really good. So that's why I, don't, I try not to see any previews in 3D, just for that yeah. reason. Yeah, they're going to put their best um, up in there. Yeah, the one that stood out for me was uh, Scarlett Johansson's uh, Lucy, which uh, there was a movie that came out, um, I don't want to say a couple years ago, where uh, basically um, the main character would swallow a pill and it would unlock his mind. I think Limitless was the movie. Yeah. Yeah. This, yeah. this Lucy is basically Limitless with the Matrix. And I'm okay with that. I don't know how very much of it is because... So I think you guys, very... you guys got like wildly different uh, trailers than I did, I think. Yeah, because I don't remember what Lucy. I'm trying to remember, to be honest. <laughs> Man, uh, right, did you the see first Lucy, time I saw it, I got Spider-Man Two, uh, Days of Future Past, and that was it. Mm-hmm. And then the second time, I got Guardians and Lucy and Draft Day. Oh wow, they threw Draft Day in there. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get any of that. I didn't even get Dragons. I didn't even get How to Train Dragon Two. I didn't get any of that stuff. That's interesting. Oh, and oh. we got Malefic- Maleficent too. Because you know Disney Marvel. Yes, synergy. I got that. I got that one. I think I, I. I don't remember seeing Spider-Man. I got Lucy. I got Draft Day, which is weird. But you know, it's all over the place. But that's okay. Hey, like rolling back into these questions. Um, I think we kind of. I think by the by what we've already been talking about, we've already kind of answered this. But did the movie flow? I'm assuming yes. I thought it flew from <laughs> from from yeah. scene to scene. It made it sense. Did. It did. There were no there were no shots where I'm like, well, what the hell? In I mean, of course, in the context of the Captain America movie, not relating all the other stuff, mm-hmm. it made sense of like, oh, okay, well, now we're going here. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, now we're going, you know, like, there were no shots that felt just extremely out of place to me. Okay. And, and, and it was also kind of interesting. I saw uh, uh, Thursday, uh, Samuel Jackson was on. Uh, Daily Show, and he says, this movie actually has a plot of these movies. <laughs> um, <laughs> and also, how the hell did they get Robert Redford? Um, well, I, they're getting a lot of big name characters. Are, like, uh, There's going to be another one in Guardians, too, that I think it's Meryl Streep. I'm not positive. Hold on, I oh, got wow. Um, yeah, I mean, it's one of those but where it's, a, it's an it's an A-list act. Doesn't it seem like they're kind of getting the, uh, the, the, the Batman... We go back to the Batman, the the old '60s series, um, where this is the big thing. I don't know if I understand it, but my kids will uh, really love if I'm in this movie. You know, um, Glenn yeah. Close. Glenn Close, Close is, is going to be in it. Oh man. Yeah. Um, but I think it's just a lot of the stars are like, "Wow, this is a big deal. Wow, this is a huge thing. Wow, you get in one, you might get attached to like." nine of them like some of these guys you know i mean samuel jackson has been in like every single one for instance yeah. um so you know well i mean clark he's... greg clark greg for christ's sake he got <laughs> like a six picture deal and a, and a lead in a tv series mm-hmm. hey, i know it, the, well they've talked with him i think it's an artist interview i listened to where he was talking about it's like yeah i was just supposed to be this big character and they loved it, and here I'm doing this and this, and and here we go. I mean, I think that's awesome. Yeah. Do you think they tie him back into the movies, or do they keep them? I mean, because they explained that. Well, well actually, I don't know because I didn't watch the show. Mm-hmm. They explained what happened well, in the show for the most part. Um, I, I think. Kinda, I think it's as one of, of those... right now. None of the Avengers know Coulson's alive. Exactly, exactly. I think it's one of those, if if they do anything, I think you won't see Coulson pop up until Avengers. Because Avengers needs to be the blowout, holy F, we just threw everybody at this movie, uh, of the movies. And and, Col- and Coulson, I think Coulson and Agents of the Shield, I think everybody in that series that's a regular, uh, that hopefully doesn't die before the end of the season from the looks of it, uh, you know, 
you know, also has a uh, rider of option to show up in Avengers 2. Or maybe Captain America 3 or something. Because that makes sense in the long run. Because he's very, usually close with S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, so, yeah. I think, I, th- again, you know, making those careers in, in, in that regard. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm wondering, like I said, you said they kind of explain it. It has nothing to do with how Samuel Jackson's character comes back to life. Does it? Or, because I feel no, like that would be a no, good no, way. No, something different. Because Nick, Nick Fury never died. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, he just faked it. I was Nick hey, Fury uh, in Captain America Mike, Two never died. Mike, as they a slowed his pul- they slowed his pulse rate down. Mike, as a fellow Marvel guy, uh, did you could you keep screaming in the back of your head? Life model decoy, life model decoy. Yes, I was I was hoping for it the whole time. <laughs> He's so going to be I, a life model decoy. I want there to just be like eight Sam Jacksons running around. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and like one, and one and one and one defective one that looks like David Hasselhoff. Just yeah, because they have this. Have. There's this annoying thing in the Marvel universe where somebody significant dies, especially when it has to do with Shield. It turns out they're a life model decoy, which is basically like a. It's just a cyborg, right? It's something like that. I mean, that. that was the prevailing rumor of Coulson, but it turns out that's not the case. Yeah, they're not going we that think. route. We so. think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because they still haven't really explained explained it, but they've kind of explained it. And I guess, and as far as your flow goes, uh, your flow question, um, I, I didn't feel bored, I, which a lot of these movies, I, I don't have this issue, I, I think, as far as the Marvel movies. You know, I'm never looking down at my watch, you know. Uh, it feels it feels like they took the lessons that they have from the other Marvel movies and applied them all to this one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Which is it's also tremendous because just about every film has had a different director. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, I think just, only Iron Man one and Iron Man two have had the same. Director. I think so. I think so. And 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 the fact that they're doing such a good job as Marvel Studios to keep everything intertwined, to keep a flow, to keep some semblance of a style between them, you know. Even though arguably you could say Iron Man three was wildly different in in tone than the first two, of course. Um, but I think it was just the subject matter. Um, it just a tremendous job, tremendous job. Uh, yeah, I mean, I agree. I think it's I think it's a huge testament to the fact that they could have different directors, and still it flows and it's still captivating, in a way. And I think that, of course, that is tribute to they are still different characters with different background stories. But I still think that they they've done a good job of keeping it in that world mm-hmm. and keeping the viewer engaged. So that's good. Um, all right. So this next one's kind of a two part question. But um, we've, we're, we're talking about a lot of this stuff already, which is really good and cool and good conversation. But here's the question. The first part is, were there any, um, the character development, do we feel like the characters actually evolved? Um, we get a lot of movies where there are characters that are literally, they're just like robots. And these are like lead characters. And I think, particularly with these kind of movies, um, it's hard to get a character like that. But for the most part, do we feel like the characters developed as the story went on. And the second part was, was there any one particular character that you guys especially enjoyed? Either their character development or just in general their character. I, I think the biggest benefactor of this movie was uh, 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 Black Widow. Third, third movie we've seen her in, and uh, <laughs> we finally got more from she's just some chick that kicks ass. I mean, you got that little bit of glimmer from Avengers, and I, you know, I guess when people are just sitting down and watching Avengers, and that's it, and they're like, "Where's the character development?" It's like, no, we had other movies to do this in, you know, this... except for Hawkeye. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, oh no, we lost Malengo, so we'll work on that. <laughs> um, go- going off, I think the biggest character that I enjoyed in this one was the Winter Soldier himself, the title character. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Sebastian Stan, like, took Bucky from the first one, and just completely turned around, like, like, it's easy to do, like, a zombified character, like, a mind-controlled, but you could tell there was, like, some pain behind those eyes when he was doing what he was doing, like, when he was coming out of the mm-hmm. mind-control and all that stuff, and it, when he when he carried Cap at the end, like when he rescued him, it w- it was really really good. Like I got into it. 
got into it a lot. Uh, Blanco, you dropped out for a moment. We we're just talking about you know uh, about the character development doesn't happen in Avengers, and that's the point, right? Black Widow got a lot yeah. out of this, and, and and Mike, as you caught the tail end there, saying Winter Soldier got a lot of development out of this thing. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think Winter Soldier's character, especially at the end when we did see the mind control, um, I agree with Mad Mike's point that you did see the emotion on there. Um, and also, uh, Scarlett Johansson's character in the car ride, especially, I mm-hmm. think she uh, revealed a lot of information that definitely made it more relatable that, you know, she's had a rough, like, she's definitely a badass who's had a pretty rough life. I also like at the end of the movie um, where she's kind of like, you know, I'm not going to turn myself in. If you guys really want to arrest me, you know where to find me. Mm-hmm. And she's kind of like, all of my shit's out there, mm-hmm. you know? So it is what it is. I, I think that also showed um, a lot of her character as I'm just going to deal with it and move on. Um, I know, like, I thought they were in the comic books, right? She and Captain America have a relationship. I think correct? in um, the regular a little universe, bit, but not. It was, it's but not Captain America's main relationship is with Agent Thirteen, otherwise known as Sharon Carter. Okay. Yeah, the neighbor. Uh, that that you saw in the movie. Oh, the neighbor. <laughs> Interesting. She's, she's not a nurse, Sorg. She's not a nurse. Right. Right. <laughs> um. Anyways, no. The, yeah, that was that was a surprise. Kind of. I I was. I'm not as familiar with. I haven't read a lot of Captain America that's not attached to Avengers. So no, I don't know any of the Agent Thirteen stuff. So that was kind of a, a yeah. surprise for me that I couldn't see coming. So. Um, and that's what I've loved about a lot of these is, is you know, I know it's comic, I know I, I know there's a universe, and I'm enjoying these ones where it's not like Batman or Superman or X-Men where I have consumed the mass quantity of what's out there for these guys and have a pretty, you know, know the details like that. Um, and to be able to pick up on stuff like that, you know, uh, you know and, 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 you know, just like seeing the Hunger Games without reading the book, you know. I, yeah, I'm not. I'm not waiting for all the all the all the hits, right? Yeah, I mean, I think overall, in general, I'm just gonna say because I just now have been think, thinking about uh, Nick Fury's character. Um, they they go into a whole backstory of him as well, and yeah, I mean, I think the writing for this was phenomenal. So, mm-hmm. um, all right. Let's go. Let's move on. This is also like another two-part question. Um, the first part is: Did you have a favorite moment, a specific, particular favorite moment in the movie? And second fold: Did you have a moment that you absolutely hated? I don't know if I hated it, but I was gonna I was gonna bring this up on the character development side. Or just like did you did you guys feel like when in the car ride you mentioned where they're going to the base and they're they're emptying out their emotions and whatnot? Uh, did you feel like you were watching a completely different movie at that point? Uh, not necessarily, like, because you still kind of need to remember that Cap is like a 90-year-old dude still trying to adjust to true. real life. And other than that, we don't know much about what he's done since Avengers, like since thawing. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I kind of felt like it was just a, it was a good transition to like kind of build their character development while we get from a point A to point B. Because if you notice, they do that again immediately after the explosion, mm-hmm. where they, um, they're they eating breakfast. And that was like the slight comic relief, but it's kind of like, all right, well, this is just another point A to point B situation. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I, I had like two favorite parts in the movie. I thought Nick Fury's... Um, the uh, the boxing with the police cars, mm-hmm. that whole evasion. I thought that, that was, was a really a cool fun scene. It'd be like, what yeah. the hell kind of tech did they pack into this thing? Right? <laughs> Where he's just like, <laughs> basically like, let's fly out of here. <laughs> and they're like, he was basically sorry, driving the gadget not operational car. right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just like, just like Fury, like having this conversation with car. You have no idea what what's going on. You don't know why he's getting attacked. But just like, and also another time displacement thing, I thought for a moment when he was driving and yelling at the car that I was watching Die Hard 3. <laughs> <laughs> little bit, little bit. But just because I played the trilogy game, the, the, the car taxi part so much 
to hear the the fake Sam Jackson just yelling while you drive. Uh, so that kind of struck a struck a chord with me. So yeah, I, that is that is kind of my favorite thing actually. Now that I think about, it. I was gonna say my my favorite thing was the um, when they when they found the doctor from the first movie. You know, because oh, I mean, I I really Zola. didn't I really didn't know what the bad guy was gonna be here. You know, I it it didn't. I don't know if I just didn't dawn on me. Of course, it'll be Hydra somehow, right? I mean, there's still a thing, right? Um, and, and it was still a mystery to me. You know, maybe you know, having not watched or read a lot of Captain America, that maybe it's obvious to others. Um, but uh, that reveal and the oh my god, his brain is in a giant '70s data bank of computers. That is fantastic. You know, just like it was a little bit of tech geekery that that's that's how they did that. And it was very uh, realistic ish, I guess. It's like if that happened at the time it happened, it would be a giant. Oh, my God. Room of computers like that. Right. Uh, yeah. So I it just like like that. He just says, I'm in you're in my brain. And then just well, and, and plus that's uh, consistent with the Arnim Zola from the comics. Like mm-hmm. that is that's he's like a giant computer brain with a camera on it like he's not a person anymore Again. that's why when they introduced Arnim Zola in the first one I'm like oh that's weird I always thought he was like a giant computer thing and they didn't touch on that at all in this one like he didn't get <laughs> killed or anything he was just captured and left but uh, but they really made up for it with this one yeah yeah again having not read it um, that, that's something that was like a nice surprise for me Yes, I agree. All right, so uh, we're kind of cutting it down to the wire here, but uh, here's kind of like the big, the big final question. Um, so basically, uh, it breaks down to this: Did you have a favorite quote? Your emotional reaction, like, did you, did you feel like, oh man, I'm pumped, I can't wait for the next movie to come out, or I gotta go see this again? And leading into that, would you see it again in theaters? And then to top that off, uh, on our recommended uh, rating scale, is this a go see it in theaters if you haven't seen it, wait for it to come out on Redbox where you can quickly go and get it, because remember, Redbox comes out 30 days before DVD release, or you could go wait for Netflix, so wait for it to come in the mail, or literally wait for it to come on television. (laughs) Uh, well, well, I already well, saw it again in the theater, so... Yeah, Mike already answered that one. <laughs> so, we, so we know Mike's answer. Yeah, Go see exactly. Um, I, uh, actually, I, I'm seeing if I can put my pre-order right now on Amazon for the DVD, or whatever form that's going to be in. Um, and, and I'm going to make clear, like, when I do this, uh, lately, when I've been buying these movies, it's a, okay, what is the version that's going to give me the digital copy as well? So... And, and that whole thing and the one shot and, and everything, right? I I, yeah. I bling out when I get this thing, uh, uh, <laughs> as far as that goes. Uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna wait for the five hundred dollar box set of all of these movies. Okay, maybe not that much. I but... have the Phase One box set. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It uh, wasn't five hundred dollars though. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. What about you, Malango? As the not as big a Marvel fan here? Um, yeah, well, I mean, no, I'm I'm a pretty like I grew up with with Marvel, not so much Avengers, but like I, you know, I got a little bit of everything. My emotional reaction was like I loved it. I thought the story played well. I thought it had a like I said, I thought it was really well written. I thought the character development was good. Um, I didn't cry or anything at the end, but I felt like man. I can't wait for like this cycle to keep going. Um, I will be seeing it again in theaters, so I guess that answers that question. And I usually don't see movies twice in theaters, but I'll be seeing it on Monday, on the fourteenth, I think. There's also so a, that's already, that's there's also a lot in there that you can catch on the second pass through. I think. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean, on my rating scale, I <laughs> I definitely go see it if you have any interest Honestly. in this environment you you should go watch those last episodes of shield uh maybe and then, uh, and then watch captain, captain america, america again, avengers and then watch tonight's. you know whatever other marvel movies you can fit into 
and, and then yep. go rewatch and you're it, it's gonna like open it's like a, it, I, I feel like it's just a whole it's different a whole movie at that point <laughs> it's a whole new world. don't don't we'll get sued by Disney no the, the, because they're Marvel no, if you sing that, if you sing that, I thought we were going that direction. I didn't sing anything. I'm just saying, I thought we were going there. All right, no, Malango. No, the, <laughs> trust me. There's only one Disney song I'd be singing right now. And it's not a whole new world. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Malango. Hydra. Malango. No. <laughs> Malango, was there anything else to wrap this up? No, that's it. Um, just want to say that for this format, oh, I did have whatever... one favorite quote that wasn't oh, Hail Hydra sorry. though. I, you want you want to say? Oh, well, yeah, it I wasn't even El Hydra. Uh, for this format, uh, we want to open it up to uh, people to either sign up, either on Facebook or at Sorgatron Media, because mm-hmm. um, we'd like to open this up to a couple other people coming on and you know sharing their discussions. Uh, obviously, through Google Hangout, we don't want a hundred people giving their opinions, but yeah, I think I think it's good. So, cool. Awesome. Awesome. And you can find that we're over at SorgatronMedia.com. You can also look up the Rambling Movie Minute uh, on the YouTubes. If you found us any other way, uh, subscribe to us so you can get all the episodes um, that way as well. And, well, that's interesting. Uh, and you can also find us on iTunes, on Spreaker, on Stitcher, uh, Rambling Movie Minute on any of those so you can get the audio form of this. Um, so with that, oh, and hey, you know, we do kind of have an email address. Uh, you can send emails. Somebody asked over the last week, so I'm going to start putting this in there. Uh, you can send the emails to movieminute at sorgatronmedia.com or just add us at sorgatron at rambling mango uh, uh, at Mad Mike 483 and uh, any questions or anything like that, and we'll include in the show. So there you go. So with Boom. that, uh, this has been your, your spoiler zone. Nobody else is Wait till they meet the twins. No. no. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. The <laughs> twins. We didn't even talk about the twins. Ah! Yeah. Don't say the M word. Fox will sue you. Don't, don't say the M word. Don't, don't say, say the M word. With that, we'll see you guys next time.